comics, video games, all pop culture information. This is the place that you need to be. This program is brought to you by Blacken Studios Entertainment Division. Remember, it's Blacken. You listen to the Eliza Baby Show. Those sexy little boys down there in Black and Studios. And I just want to sponsor y'all and tell y'all good job. Thanks for downloading the Elijah Bailey Show from iTunes or BlackStudios.com. And here's a word from some of the folks that make it possible for you to hear this show for free every Thursday. Providing bankruptcy services throughout the state of Oklahoma, Bowler & Associates is a bankruptcy law firm based in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Their mission is to relieve you from threat of debt collectors, garnishments, repossessions, tax levies, foreclosures, and much more. Backed by more than 20 years of experience in the legal field, they excel in finding the quickest, most effective, and most affordable solution to all your legal and financial troubles. You can find them at Bowler Law on Facebook and also visit the website at www.bowlerlawfirm.com. Reach them at 405-733-3000. You can also email them at bankruptcy at bowlerandassociates.com. And three, two, one, and we are here with episode 243 of the Elijah Bailey Show. As you can see, I am the phenomenal, the fantastic Elijah Bailey. And without me, the title doesn't make sense. I mean, the title makes sense. Any way you look at it, I was lazy. Uh, but you do notice that it is just me. My good dear... Uh, uh, friend the buckety has uh <coughs> is taking some time off it's uh it's getting me right here folks no but um he's doing a lot more at the studio so it's requiring him to be a lot more and so he'll be in and out every now and then we still have uh big things coming towards the end of the year even though 2020 has sucked ass we do have the uh anime and well are we going to do that? Yeah, anime of the year and video game of the year. And then also, you know, we don't like to do resolutions. So we're just going to take a look back on 2020 and also look forward to 2021. So without further ado, let's go ahead and turn that nasty music on. Because be, it's, been, it's been a day. That's why we had to start the show with me playing a little bit of Ghost of Tsushima because it has been a day. So if you guys want to chill before the show, probably about, I don't know, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, just come to the Facebook page uh, at EJB Gaming, and I'll be streaming from there, but it'll also be on the Elijah Bailey Show Facebook page as well. But after the show, that does get clipped out, um, and then we will be doing private streams on the Patreon page, but that stuff can be talked about later. This is your place for anime goodness, but there's a twist this week. Because we have some anime and video game awards, we're doing an anime and video game show this week, so we're going to go over all the news uh, well, not all the news, just, you know, the good shit, the shit that we need to talk about. And then I'm also going to give you what released for the month of December for your anime and video game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and turn that nasty music on. Ah, uh, there it is. It took a second to come on. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I, I might be, I might be just a little hot. Let's do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. That sounds a little bit better. Mmm. See, I love listening to the music. It just makes me feel better. And that's all I did today was listen to music. I listened to anime themes, anime openings. I listened to my hype playlist on Spotify. I listened to uh, some of my favorite podcasts on Spotify, which you can find this podcast on Spotify, The Elijah Bailey Show, or my other podcast, A Little Bit of Anime, and previous uh, podcasts I no longer do. Uh, Super Power Movie Podcast and The Warrior Way are all on Spotify, as well as all other Black and Studios podcasts. Now... Kylo, calm down. He's ready for me to start the show, folks. Uh, we're here. 
Kylo, calm it down. Yeah, and tell your brother to shut the hell up. See, Chewie stuck his head in here because he knew somebody's gonna be in trouble. But like I said, we're covering anime and video games, um, and this is there's there's a lot. There is a lot here, so I'm not even going to speak on what I have been playing. I'm not going to talk about what I've been watching. I'm just going to give you the releases and go right into the news to try to make this show uh, as slim as possible. So, December anime releases. Oh, before we do that, I want to put this up real quick because <clears throat> I don't think I shared it to our book. Now, I, I'm going to have to do something about the, the computer because I have glare on all my glasses when I sit back here, and I hate seeing that damn glare on my eyes. Uh, but just bear with me. Make it, it It's it's just a uh, the anime sheen. So if it, you just see glare on my eyes the, the entire time, I'm just thinking. I've got ideas. But December anime releases uh, starting December 5th. Uh, which the day that we're recording this is already passed, but December 5th, Fate Grand Order Camelot Wandering Agatrim uh, from Signal MD, directed by K. Swaza. Uh, December 11th, Marudase Kintaro from Studio 7, directed by Hideke Araki. Uh, also releasing on December 11th is Yes, No, or Maybe from Lesprit, directed by Masahiro. Yeah, Masahiro Takata. Uh, releasing on Christmas, we have three uh, three titles. We have Josie, the Tiger and the Fish from Bones, uh, directed by Kotaro Tamura. We also have Pokemon the Movie, Secrets of the Village from OLM, directed by Tetsuya Yajima. And then we have Popel of Chimney Town from Studio 4 Degrees directed by Yusuke Hitoro and then last but not least releasing in December is December 30th Earwig and the Witch from Studio Ghibli directed by uh, Goro Miyazaki so those are your anime releases for the month <coughs> of December now there's only three news articles that I uh, picked up and I wanted to talk about this month that uh, came out. This one is from Anime News Network. It released on December 3rd, written by Lindsay Loveridge. Junji Ito manga gets spooky reading by professional storyteller Junji Inigawa. So professional ghost storyteller Junji Inigawa will hold a reading of Junji Ito's short horror story uh, Back Alley on YouTube on December 11th. The reading will be free to watch and hosted uh, on uh, Asia's Shimbun's Arts and Culture Channel on December 11th at 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, Japan time. The event is the uh, product of a successful crowdfunding campaign launched in August. The, the campaign raised the target amount of 1 million yen. Uh, U.S. would be $9,600 before December 18th deadline. Back Alley was originally published in 1997 in Ito's The Bully Story com uh, Collection. The manga, fo the manga follows a boy named Ishida who is renting a room. He lives alongside Mrs. Uchida and her daughter Shinbo. Um, there's a back alley behind Ishida's rental, but he's surprised to find it is completely fenced off. He begins to hear voices at night coming from the back alley, but every time he investigates the sounds, he finds the alley vacant. Ishida begins to uncover the mystery of what happened in the alley and why it is no longer accessible. Iwagawa uh, has uh, previously lent his talents to tell the ghostly tales of Golden Kamu prisoners and uh, tried to cross the mediums by trying his hand in Resident Evil 7. So again, this will be on YouTube. You can find it for free um, December 11th. So this is for everybody that's out there listening. This is tomorrow. This is December 10th when the show drops. So December 11th, make sure that you guys tune in for that. Because that sounds interesting. I love Juchi Ito's uh, stuff and to hear him read and to hear him speak on what scares him or to see him do reactions on YouTube. It's always interesting because he has a very uh, specific mind. This was really cool because I didn't think that you would hear about these. I don't know. I, I just didn't. You never hear about these titles getting these kind of awards. And I feel like they should get more awards and they might be in 
the of the year awards that I, that I do. But Sony reveals winners of PlayStation Partner Awards 2020. This also comes from Anime News Network, uh, also on December 3rd, written by uh, Christine Hopkins. Sony Interactive Entertainment streamed the PlayStation Partner Awards 2020 in Japan on Thursday. Sony changed the title of its awards from PlayStation Awards to PlayStation Partner Awards this year, after the awards celebrated their 25th anniversary last year. Sony has also changed the awards category. The winners of the PlayStation Partner Award 2020 are as follows. So, of the Partner Award, awarded to games highly acclaimed and praised around the world. At the at the top of the list, Mobile Suit Gundam, Battle Origins 2, Black Desert, Noi 2, Resident Evil 3 Remake slash Resident Evil Resistance, uh, Final Fantasy, this would be the Shadow uh, Ringers expansion, Persona 5 Royale, and then Yakuza Like a Fucking Dragon. Now, they go to Special Awards. These, go, uh, these games are selected from two categories. Games developed outside of Japan and Asia and games developed in collaboration with uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment World Studios. So we have Apex Legends and in Death Strandings. Last but not least, the Grand Awards. These games are the three titles with the biggest sales released between October 2019 and September 2020 that were developed uh, in Japan and Asia. We have eFootball PES 2020. I'm not even worried about that one. The next one on the list is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Fucking yeah. And then also Final Fantasy VII Remake. Fuck yeah. So those titles that you heard in those categories of Partner Awards, Special Awards, and Grand Awards, I mean, that's amazing. To I didn't think, I don't know, I, you never think that like the Dragon Ball Z title, especially the, the, the fighters that you've been getting, but now this open world game would be up for any kind of awards. Um, let alone they had the biggest sales release between uh, October 2019 and then September 2020. So that's that's very cool. And you can also see the trend too, like Sony acquiring Crunchyroll and then everybody really fighting over anime and trying to bring that medium and cross it over and everything. It, it's it's nice. We're going to see a lot more stuff like this. Last but not least uh, is, a, is a mixed story. Uh, we recently lost um, a, a famous, famous voice actor, Kirby Morrow, and uh, this story kind of builds upon that loss, and, and uh, we'll talk about that because he passed on um, November 18th. But family launches crowdfunding campaign for uh, Kirby Morrow Memorial Scholarship. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Kirby Morrow Memorial Scholarship Fund in honor of the late voice actor. So the family of the late voice actor, Kirby Morrow, have launched a GoFundMe campaign to help raise funds for the scholarship in his honor. The actor's brother, Casey Morrow, launched the campaign with plans to establish the uh, the Kirby Morrow Memorial Scholarship Fund meant to help people pursuing an education in the performing arts. Casey is working with the... um, the Calgary Foundation in Alberta, Canada, for the uh, fundraising project. The uh, campaign has a goal of fifty thousand U.S. dollars. It has raised eight thousand three hundred and twenty-five dollars as of uh, present time. Actor and voice actor Kirby Morrow passed away on November eighteenth. He was forty-seven. Kirby has played numerous roles in many live-action animated series, including dub of anime. In uh, anime, some of his best-known roles, and this is, like, you guys got to go back and find this, but it's, it, the voice, all the voices of Goku have been my voices of Goku. Uh, but they include Goku in the Ocean uh, dub, presentation of Dragon Ball Z, Moroku in Inuyasha, and uh, Troa Barton in Mobile Suit, Troa, in Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. More reprises role as Morocco in the current airing of Yasuhime Princess Half Demon anime. Uh, and the voice actor, uh, he voiced the character in the appearance of the first episode. Some of his other uh, anime dubs include Van in Escaflone, Gord in Dot Hack Roots, Teru uh, in Death Note, uh, <laughs> Billy in Mobile Suit Gundam uh, 00. Ryu and Project Arms, and the list goes on. Outside of anime, Kirby, Kirby Morrow also uh, played Cyclops in X Men's Evolution, uh, Cole in Ninja Gaio, and then Captain David Kinemon in uh, Stargate. So again, I think it's it's cool that he wanted to set up this fun, and I'm think it's amazing that his brother took it upon himself to continue that. Uh, for the performing arts and for people that want to get into voice acting because it seems like that door is kind of getting pushed open 
uh, again so that way more people because there's a lot of people if you guys are watching YouTube that are very talented uh, in voice acting and they're ending up just animating and doing their own stuff there but if they got on these shows it would add another diverse culture of voices for us to hear when we watch anime but with that being said we're going to take our first pause for the cause and we'll be right back with episode 243 of the Elijah Bailey show Let's face it, mechs can be expensive initially and to maintain. Do yourself a favor and cut the cost down to the bare nuts and bolts. Studies show that regular application of GW40 can reduce the wear and tear from exposure to harsh environments. Joints clog with sand? GW40 will fix it. Visors covered in ice and frost with a little GW40? Watch as it melts right off. Save your mech time and money with GW40. Gun damn. Are you a thug, pickpocket, mafioso, yakuza, delinquent, or just plain degenerate? Then you're exactly who we're looking for. If you don't mind getting your hands dirty and you want to travel the Southeast Asian waters taking what you want and giving nothing back, then come to the center of town and sign up to be a part of the Lagoon's crew. We guarantee food and shelter, more or less, and the time of your life. And we are back. <coughs> I had a perfect just a minute ago, and it was nice. I was like, and we're back. And the mic was off. But we're here. We just hit uh, the anime releases for December, as well as um, the news stories. And I said three. It's kind of like four, because we talked about Kirby Morrow's death as well. So now let's go ahead and move to the character that we are, the black character that we are focusing on this week. We're actually going to focus on the anime character, and it's S.A.M. Sam from Cannon Busters. S.A.M. Uh, short for Special Associate Model. He's one of the main characters of Cannon Busters. She is a high-end robot who was separated from her best friend and heir to the throne of Bodica, Princess Kelby. Uh, with whom she seeks to reunite with. As a robot program uh, for friendship, SAM, Sam is very outgoing and loyal to those she registers as friends. She tries her best to befriend as many people as possible and is completely oblivious, oblivious to the idea that not everyone wishes to find a friend in her travels. She takes no offense to being brushed off or insulted, it seems, though this may uh, simply be because she doesn't understand what it means to be called names and treated with disrespect. Uh, SAM holds a innocent and naive outlook on life, seeing everything uh, through rose-colored lenses. She does not seem to have a strong grasp on morality. Um, show, uh, damn it. Hang on. There we go. Uh, she does not seem to have a strong grasp on morality. Uh, shown when she attempts to ask uh, a dying creature for directions in the series' first episode and wishes him to have a good sleep when he passes away. So, again, Sam is a unique character, but also very unique in this show. Cannon Busters was one of the first uh, anime to come to Netflix, which is an all-black anime that is recent. Um, and I, I love her character because when she does uh, have to protect somebody, she completely is does a 180 from who she was before. So you guys got to check it out. It's on Netflix if you haven't. Let's go into what's new in gaming video games, December video game releases. This list is an asshole's length. It is fucking long. Okay. Okay, Kronos, Before the Ashes, coming out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Stadia on December 1st. Uh, let's see, how many titles do we have coming out on December 1st? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these six titles are all coming out on December 1st. That's how I'm going to do it. So we're listening for the date that the number of titles come out. These six titles all come out on December 1st, which we're already past December 1st, so you can get them 
now. Uh, Kronos Before the Ashes on PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Stadia. Empire Sin on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Rainbow Siege on PS5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, Red Dead Online on PC, PS4, Xbox One. And then Twin Mirror, Lost on Arrival, PC, PS4, Xbox One. And last but not least, Worms Rumble on PC, PS5, and PS4. And these two titles come, came out on December 2nd. Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 5 for PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Sam and Max. Yes, I loved that show on Fox Kids when it was out. That's how old I am. Sam and Max Save the World Remastered PC and Switch was also is a funny-ass game. Um, one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These nine titles came out on December 3rd. Uh, Death Tales for the Switch. Uh, El Hio, a Wild West tale on PC and Stadia. Immortals Phoenix Rising, which I have not played yet, but I hear so many good things about. Came out on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PC4, and Xbox One, Switch, and Stadia. Um, <clears throat> Morbid, the seven, uh, yeah, Morbid, the seven acolytes came out on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Phoenix Point, Year One Edition, PC. Uh, Sheeran, the Wanderer, the Tower of the Fortune, and the Dice of the Fate for PC. And then we have uh, Startup Panic for PC. Uh, Taco no Tatsuji. Uh, Rhythmic Adventure Pack came out for the Switch, and last was Tinker Town on PC, um, which came out again all on December third. Then we have uh, Commandos Two HD Remastered for the Switch, Dark Q Complete uh, Edition PC, PS4, Xbox One, Dragon Quest Eleven S, Echoes of the Elusive Age Definitive Edition, uh, Definitive Edition for PC, PS4, Xbox One, FIFA Twenty One for PS5 and Xbox Series X. Fitness Boxing 2 Rhythm and Exercise for the Switch. I saw that shit. It looked like the bullshit game. I don't know. John Wick Hex for Xbox One Switch. Man 21 for PS5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, Suzerain for PC. Call of Duty Warzone Season 7 for PC. Oh, shit. Uh, not that one. We stopped the Suzerain. Those all came out on December 4th. Coming out on December 8th, we have Call of Duty Warzone Season 7 for PC, PS4, Xbox One, Call uh, of the Sea, PC, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Destiny 2 for PS5 and Xbox Series X, Doom Eternal for the Switch, Plant Zoo Aquatic Pack DLC for the PC, um, Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 for Xbox Series X, Puyo Puyo, yeah. Puyo Puyo, Tetris 2, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch. Right, The Eye of Atlantis for PC and VR. Uh, Shakes on the Plane. Stupid. For PC and Switch. Uh, Swords of uh, Swords of Gargonaut for PSVR. Uh, Tim Tim for PS5. And that is it. All releasing on December 8th. Just a few more. We have Minecraft Dungeons Howling Peaks DLC for P uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch December 9th. Also, a Wood Salt coming out for PC and Switch on December 9th. Next is Animal Farm coming out for the PC. And um, The Legend of Runzia. Um, and then, I don't know if this is... Is this accurate? There was some news that came out. Um, but we have uh, Cyberpunk for uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Stadia. Uh, December 10th should be the Cyberpunk pre-order. Haven, PC, uh, uh, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and then Swords of the Necromancer, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch all on December 10th. Uh, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, Space Invaders Forever uh, for PC and Switch coming out on December 11th. The collection of uh, Saga Final Fantasy Legend coming out for the Switch. And then GTA Online, the KO Pirico Heist PC, PS4, Xbox One coming out on December 15th. MXGP 2020 coming out for PC, PS4, Xbox One on December 16th. Override 2 Super Mech League coming out for PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch on December 22nd. The Binding of Isaac's Repentance 
DLC coming out for PC on uh, December 23rd. Then we have Fall Guys Season 3 coming out for PC and PS4. And then also When the Past was around for PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch. But those are all in December, but there's no date given to be announced. So those are all the releases. If you need to write those down, be my guest. Go back, rewind the podcast, keep listening, or just go to patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey Show. And the show notes are there, and you can just go straight down this list. Easy. Sha- easy. Um, okay, well, there are uh, five articles I want to go over in uh, What's New in Gaming this week. This one comes from GameSpot by uh, Janae Sitz on December 3rd. PS5 restock updates. Check PS5 stock at the GameStop, Walmart, Best Buy, Target, and Amazon, as well as Newegg, uh, PlayStation Direct, StockX. And I think that is all on this list. Now, uh, I'm not going to read through here because it, it keeps updating, keeps changing. Again, if you go to Patreon, you click that, you can go to whatever retailer you want and see when they're restocking. Uh, after Black Friday, everybody kind of upped their restock game. So um, this is the news I was talking about. This news comes from comicbook.com. Cyberpunk 2077 confirms disappointing launch news. Uh, this came out uh, yesterday, December 5th by Tyler Fisher. No, hang on one second. Let me make sure I got the okay the sound off. Because you know when you go to comicbook.com and it, it plays the video. I love the video, but the sound doesn't always go off. Uh, CD Projekt Red has confirmed some slightly disappointing news about the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. The next game from the developers of The Witcher 3 is finally, after several delays and years in development, releasing next week via the PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PC, and Google Stadia. And when it does, it will have some meaty updates that need to be downloaded before being played. So around the world, players have already gotten their hands on the open world RPG, uh, whether via pre-release copies or by retailers breaking street uh, street dates. Uh, that said, those lucky enough to play the game, hi- the highly anticipated game early, were greeted this week with an update packing of substantial download size. Ta- uh, taken to Twitter, Dreamcast guy revealed the update, which comes in a packing 43.5 gigabytes download a file size is bigger than many if not most games call of duty uh if now uh for now it's unclear what exactly the update does but it presumably does a lot uh if it's packing a download size that big so yeah once you uh pick up your copy of uh, cyberpunk 2077 which is if you listen to the show again it came out it came out today it's it, it has come out today you guys got to go get it if you have not but when you do 43.5 gigabytes is waiting on your ass at home so just buckle up just let it go in the background put a lasagna in I'm gonna do some push-ups fucking watch anime go through the whole cowboy bebop saga when you come back you'll be able to play because what, what we've seen of the gameplay is, is legit. So, uh, Next is coming from Polygon <clears throat> by Cass Marshall. Red Dead Online's latest update may be the last straw for frustrated fans. The Bounty Hunter update did not please players. Now, I haven't played it yet. I haven't been back to the world of Red Dead in a while, which you guys will see me uh, stream you know soon. But I have, I think the last that I did was just, I just went around the open world just to search and I think I ended up fishing and then like rowing on a boat and doing some stupid shit. But uh, as the article says, a new Red Dead Online update arrived on December 1st and fans were excited. Players have uh, long standing concerns about the, uh, the pace of the updates and whether those updates felt impactful. And they were hoping that adding a bounty hunter class could help spice up their cowboy experience. But now that they've had the chance to play it, many Red Dead Online fans are furious about the latest patch. Uh, there are two main additions, the uh, <laughs> Prestige Bounty Hunter license and the Outlaw Pass. The license unlocks 10 new levels of the classes and gives access to new cosmetics like a new coat of paint on the, um, the bounty wagon and some high paying bounties and you know spurs and all that shit. However, it also requires 15 gold bars, the game's real money currency, to unlock this content. So that's bullshit because I don't put in that currency. I just get the free stuff, like the free rewards, and I use those tickets. 
Uh, that's over half the cost it takes to unlock the Moonshine or Naturalist roles, uh, both which bring substantially more content to the game. For instance, the Moonshiner came with a, a short but well-crafted story campaign and a player-owned bar. The Naturalist uh, offered two NPCs with different cosmetic reward tracks. Uh, the Outlaw Pass is Red Dead Online's version of the Battle Pass. While it's active... Uh, it tracks the player's XP from mission and activities. Everyone has access to the free version, but players can only pay for a premium version that offers additional rewards. Previously, fans have considered the Outlaw Pass to be uh, worth it, if only because players who acquire the uh, required XP would earn back all 40 gold bars, along with uh, their co uh, cosmetic rewards, emotes, and quality of life rewards. But now the pass offers only 30 gold bars unless you purchase it uh, within the first week, which means any extra uh, 10 gold bars and any extra 400 uh, in-game dollars, the cents, uh, yeah, hang on, which rewards an extra 10 gold bars and an extra 400 in-game dollars, there we go. The cents uh, in the community is that... Um, this change is an attempt by Rockstar to trigger fear of missing out, especially since the premium rewards seem lackluster to fans. And I think I haven't really been online that much for Red Dead, so I and it is lackluster to me. It's, it doesn't seem worth it as much as the main campaign. And then going around that world and trying to make sure that I got everything in there. Um, so I kind of feel everybody on that. Uh, players feel like if they uh, wanted any item for the outlaw pass and they want their gold bars back they should pull the triggers immediately even if the rest of the rewards don't seem worth it um, no outfit unlocked at level one barely any clothes or hats uh, no weapon skins just um, filler items all around wrote one fan of the game subreddit the only thing I really love is Arthur's coat really underwhelming compared to the previous passes uh, hope you guys like picture poses, filters, and backdrops, wrote another one using uh, smiley emojis sarcastically. So, again, these are some of the pro problems. The article continues to go on, which you guys, again, patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show. You can go read the rest of the article there yourself and uh, see what other concerns and problems fans had. But I feel like the all the microtransactions for everything, uh, expansions for whatever it is, they do seem a lackluster. They don't seem like they're worth it. And there's very few that I really pay for. There's very few that I buy um, whenever I purchase a game. So I can understand and I can see why they're pissed, uh, especially if you're waiting for something like this. And, and, you know, I don't know. You want everything to be free. You want everybody to be pleased, to be happy. You want everybody to have fun. But you also want to have a lot of shit to have fun. Give me, like, this packs of dynamite and some shit. Give me something. Don't give me some shit that means nothing to none of the gameplay and is not, you know, anything whatsoever. Uh, this comes from Kotaku uh, by Luke Plung Plunkett. There we go, Luke Plunkett. Scientists are trying to work out why you weirdos invert your controls. I thought this was cool. After The Guardian ran a story earlier this year on gamers inverting their controls, a group of scientists who have shifted their studies into online stuff during COVID are now doing or are now going to do a little research to find out why some people play video games uh, the normal way while others play them backwards. Uh, and he's like, I'm half joking here. Years spent... Uh, playing flight sims as a kid having uh, have ir irrevocably uh fucked me up when it comes to which games i play inverted and which i don't as the guardian uh, report dr jennifer corbert and dr jap munka uh, munek muneki muneki i think uh, from the Visual Percep uh, Perception and Attention Lab uh, at Brunel University in London are currently asking for volunteers to take part in experiments running remote behavioral and psychological experiments uh, designed to examine how an individual's uh, visual uh, perceptual abilities may affect how they impact and interact with both real and virtual environments. In other words, whether there's something going on upstairs that determines why people prefer inverted controls or whether the same tendency is reflected elsewhere in their lives. Most research focuses on how people pay attention 
to individual objects, but humans can't really uh, process more than a few details at once. Uh, Corbett says there is a gaping hole in uh, in our knowledge regarding how our visual perception is heavily dependent on the rest of that uh, and the rest of this vast majority of sensory information. Being able to predict how a person will interact with a given environment or a context can bring about uh, momental, uh, monumental advancements in technology. While this all sounds terribly abstract, some of the real world applications, Corbett suggests, uh, this research could benefit are stuff like safety, uh, critical tasks like uh, detecting weapons in bag scans or tumors in x rays. So I thought this was really cool. I wish it was here because if they're doing it remotely, I would do this because I play games, you know, invertedly. And I think it came from just when they started introducing, you know, titles that I like that were inverted I just had to convert to that because there was no other option I don't know how you guys were if you just have to play inverted and you can't play any other way and you invert your controls and everything because I don't do that I still I go back and forth and that's why like when you guys see me streaming I'm like oh I'm fucked up I play too much you know Dragon Ball Z Kakarot the controls are close to this and I jump back in the jump force because the inversion on the controls is it just fucks you up but I'd want to do it because I do both i do play inverted and i play uninverted um, if i solely played inverted that'd be even more interesting but i do see things or play things you know backwards when i'm trying to figure out how they work or how something happened especially if i'm watching body movements because uh, or music because I, I have melodic memory so i work it in a in a different way by color and backwards kind and the same thing for martial arts when I see techniques done or somebody's doing something, I work it so I can get out or where I can relieve tension uh, where there is tension. So, uh, yeah, th but again, this article, if you want to take part in the experiment or see if you're close to Brunel University in London, uh, patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show. Fuck, I just got rid of it. Hang on, I got to pull this up. Um, there's not going to be no sound on it. Fuck that. I'm, I'm tired of all the YouTube bullshit. But we are about to watch this trailer. Now, before we watch it, I'm going to go ahead and read this article because there's a new The Last of Us Part 2 trailer centering on Abby. This comes from Game Informer former by Linnea Rupert. And this was pretty cool. And I love the trailer. So once we, uh, once the shit, ooh, how about that? Hang on. I might, I might have something. I can do here. Mm, yeah, that'll work. Okay, this is what we're about to do. For you, for those of you that are not um, watching, I am making this video possible for all the people out there in TV land. I'm making it possible for them to, to watch it. So, uh, ooh, that's the wrong display. Why? Oh, okay, okay, okay. There we go. I got confused for a second. So we're about to go, and we're going to watch this trailer, Abby, and I'm going to read you uh, what they wrote. But The Last of Us Part Two swept up some impressive awards during the Joystick Awards, and now there is uh, one last show on the horizon, the Game Awards. Uh, with The Last of Us Part Two being a key nominee in several notable categories, Naughty Dog just released a brand new trailer for the sequel, Other, uh, other Main Character, Abby. The latest story trailer dives deep into the narrative surrounding both Abby and Ellie. So if you haven't played the game yet and want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to skip out on the video below, which even watching it, it does well, watching it without context doesn't tell anything. It's kind of, it's taken everywhere. Uh, but yeah, if you want to spoilers, three, two, one, shut it down, come back in like four minutes, four minutes ahead. Uh, as 2020 winds down, we're so thankful to everyone that has played The Last of Us Part Two. reads a new tweet from Naughty Dog. For those experiencing it for the first time this month, check out our new trailer that offers an expanded look into Abby's story and how it collides with Ellie. Uh, one component <clears throat> that I wasn't expecting from The Last of Us sequel is how much I came to resonate with Abby. When she was first revealed as a villain, my instant need to protect Ellie made me re uh, resent the character, which was the entire point of her uh, contentious role. That being said, 
Players dove into the role of both Ellie and Abby in equal parts during this game, which eventually built a relationship with her as a um, as a newcomer to the franchise. Um, and I'm going to skip this part because this would ruin the game. But I felt attached to both characters with both leads, each offering their own set of complications and problematic contributions to the narrative. Abby is an incre- uh, cr- incredible nuanced character which is explored both in a narrative and in the new video. It's an interesting moral dilemma when uh, taking to a game that is designed to make you uncomfortable with the guttural and visceral new reality. The latest trailer does a solid job in fleshing out who Abby is beyond basic internet commentary. So as you guys continue to watch this, uh, there we go. There's the end. This is the trailer. Uh, We're going to call this the trailer of Abby. And I loved it. Uh, as you guys know, from my, my T. Lou Tuesday playthrough, I dedicated a whole uh, stream to that game because I loved the game and I loved the way it played. Uh, I'm glad that they're, they're giving Abby some shine. I'm glad that she is getting her own because she deserves it. Uh, she, she, she did some things. Um, and with that being said, let's take another pause for the cause and then we'll be right back. Uh, you're going to hear the same commercials again. Um for the people that are watching live, for the people that you're listening, you, you heard that, but you're going to hear different commercials. Uh, I'm Elijah Bailey, and I'll be right back with the Elijah Bailey Show. Are you a thug? pickpocket, mafioso, yakuza, delinquent, or just plain degenerate? Then you're exactly who we're looking for. If you don't mind getting your hands dirty and you want to travel the Southeast Asian waters taking what you want and giving nothing back, then come to the center of town and sign up to be a part of the Lagoon's crew. We guarantee food and shelter, more or less, and the time of your life. Let's face it, mechs can be expensive initially and to maintain. Do yourself a favor and cut the cost down to the bare nuts and bolts. Studies show that regular application of GW40 can reduce the wear and tear from exposure to harsh environments. Joints clog with sand? GW40 will fix it. Visors covered in ice and frost with a little GW40? Watch as it melts right off. Save your mech time and money with GW40. Gun damn. That's right, motherfuckers. I'm back. Hey, what's up? All right, so we're back into the show. Let's get into segment three, anime and manga of the month. Um, You're just going to have to get your pen and paper out and write this shit down. You see? You dig? Oh, I wonder if we can... I wonder if we can get away with this <laughs> uh, real quick. Because the, the, the bucket he came up with this, not like keeping this in, so... Okay, this is what we're going to do. Let me turn this down. Oh, that's about as loud as me. That's okay. So, the anime of the month is... Boom, 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 Black Bullet. Okay, we're, we're done jamming to that. I don't want no copyright shit on this show because they be bitching all the time. But in the year 2021, mankind was defeated by Gastria, a parasitical virus, and is forced to live within a wall made of vernanium, vera, vernium, monolith, vernium monolith, uh, a metal that was able to subdue Gastria. Soon, the cursed children, children born with the Gastria virus, who are able to control it, which gives them superhuman abilities, were discovered. Due to Gastria's virus interventions, the cursed children could only be female. Civil securities are formed to specialize in fighting against Gastria, operating with a pair of uh, uh, initiators who are cursed children and a promoter serving the lead of the cursed children. So what I'm going to do, I didn't, I, I, I'm going to go back. 
to this. I, I went back to Sailor Moon. I'm going to put Sailor Moon on pause, go back and watch Black Bullet, and give you guys a better explanation than that bullshit the Crunchyroll will be serving up. But this was initially re- released April 8th of 2014 from Kenma Centris and Orange Studios, created by Shinden Kanzaki. 13 episodes, and you can watch it on Crunchyroll and VRV. Now let's see if we can do this sweet magic again as we go into the... Uh, Manga of the month. Oh yeah. Oh, is it? Is it? Is the the music on? Okay, okay. okay. This might be loud. This is the weirdest fucking opening. But uh, the manga of the month is. Oh yeah, we reaching that. We yeah, we about to cut that off. This is abrupt, abrupt stop. The manga of the month is To Love Rue. To Love Rue or Toraburu is a Japanese manga series written by Saki. Uh, Hasumi, and illustrated by Kentoro Yabuki, created, uh, the creator of Black Cat. The manga was serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump magazine in April 2006 through August 2009. So Rito Yuki had no idea the planet uh, Devil Luca uh, even existed while their princess Lala teleported into his black bathtub. But now he finds himself to be engaged to the beautiful girl with pointy tail. Uh, Problems of various aliens are showing up on missions of very hostile intent. Worse, the girl that Rito really likes is still completely unaware of his feelings. This is a fucking funny comedy. Uh, I told you guys I wanted to go back to it because I couldn't remember that much about it. And I remember all this shit. It's just stupid as hell. It's almost like the uh, boy, uh, the uh, male mermaid that's in the guy's tub. Uh, what the fuck is that show? I'll find that title too. But. Make sure to watch our anime of the month, which is Black Bullet, and read the manga of the month. It's not that long. To Love Rue, there's a lot of fucking comedy in this shit. It's just crazy. Aliens, it's like the the love, etchiest version, more comedy, Gintama, if that makes sense. Uh, but that's it for today's show. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, pre-show, playing some uh, Ghost of Shishima. I'm in martial arts. We don't do this but it seemed right at the moment but thank you for the ghost of sheep and thank you for staying for the show thank you for staying for the show the bucket is not here but i am i got you right now you see this if i ever run for president right here come to the mic hey i got your world i got you i'm not even going to be the president of the u.s i'm president of the world i got your world fucking president right here but this is episode 243. We combined video games and anime. <laughs> Made them one. Because we have the anime of the year. And video game of the year awards. As well as. <sighs> the reflection of 2020. The shit bomb whole year of 2020. All that it was and all that it will be. Uh, you you see that we had to stop doing son of a bitch of the week. Because it was it was too overwhelming. But thank you guys for joining me again for another amazing show. It's always fun to have you guys here. It's always fun for everybody that follows. We're at 211, 212 followers on Twitch. Um, Remember, you can always watch the show live on Sundays, 4.30 p.m. And again, like I said, we'll probably start like 20, maybe 30 minutes early. We'll play some games, talk, chit-chat before the show, and then we'll get right into the show. That way I don't have to start at 4.50. Um, But thank you guys again. Let's put this music on. Uh, let's turn it down just a bit. Let's get just a little quiet in the ears. Um, you can find anything and everything you need to know about The Elijah Bailey Show on our official Facebook page, The Elijah Bailey Show. Or you can follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram at Elijah Bailey Show. Just chop off the W on the end. That's S-H-O. Um, send your emails to Elijah Bailey Show at gmail.com. And make sure to uh, subscribe, rate, and review on Apple podcasts uh follow us on podbeam add us to your playlist on spotify there we go (laughs) add us to your playlist on spotify make sure to do all those things blackandstudios.com where you can find each and every podcast of black and studios follow them there and all over social media facebook snapchat uh instagram twitter is at black and studios and if you're thinking about doing a podcast at black and Studio or podcast at black and studios.com send your emails to podcast at black and studios.com and let the buckety mr richard tap know 
that you want to tap in to Black and Studios. I'm Elijah 5000. Thank you guys for joining me for another bomb ass podcast. And I'll catch your ass in the next podcast. I'm out. Hey, what's up, everybody? Elijah 5000 here. Me and the Buckety appreciate it so much that you download this show each and every week. Again, we drop every Thursday. If you're new to the Elijah Bailey Show, go to Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Spotify, or wherever you listen to this auditorial pleasure that you get weekly, and just subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you, and I'll catch your ass in the next podcast.